So let me around. I got to kind of get where you guys are sitting. This is my chair. Okay. So see, as soon as I, I got to get it up here. Yeah. I'm going to stop the video for a minute. Did you get my text? Sorry, text. Uh, I didn't. I just texted you. Oh, I'm here. I rearranged all the furniture. Uh, I don't know what you think. Oh, you didn't see that text? No. Oh, you <laughs> okay.
Okay. Good morning, everyone. Live and in person, and it's not Saturday Night Live. It's the Commission of Pharmacy Live at 450 Boulevard, Columbus Boulevard in Hartford, Connecticut. Our first live meeting. Of, I don't know how long. Does anybody know when our last live meeting January, was? January 2020, I was told. Well, I'm so glad to see so many of us made it here live. Thank you, CDS, for being the only live person here today. I appreciate that. Everyone else that's on Zoom, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, hopefully, we'll get to see you at some point. Um, we're going to allow the Zoom hybrid for a while, but at some point, it will go away. So good morning, everyone. Just um, some housekeeping. Please silence cell phones and devices. If you're joining, uh, joining us, please mute your screens um, until it's your turn on the agenda. Um, also, uh, we have to see you. We have to see who you are. We have to be able to hear you. Emojis or your name doesn't count. So when it's your turn, we make sure your, your screen is working correctly so we can see you. And with that, we'll take a look starting to my left. Uh, Brian Calhoun, Commissioner. Commissioner. Angelo DeFazio, Commissioner. Garbery, Commissioner. Tina Samples, Board Administrator. Well, welcome everybody and good morning. Let's get right started with new pharmacy applications. Um, we're gonna try this via Zoom. Hopefully it works. Uh, it hasn't worked very well since we've been on Zoom, but we'll try it again. Is Barnum Avenue Pharmacy LLC here? I'm here, can you hear me? Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Raymond, is your video on? I'm, I'm gonna try to reconnect. It was connecting before. I just lost my connection with me one second. Okay. Okay, let me see. Yeah, it, it somehow is not letting me connect. It was there when I started. Mm -hmm. It's not connecting me to the video. Should I go back to link and, and reconnect? Okay. Perfect. Okay, great. Awesome. We, we can see you now, Mabu. Uh, okay, are you in the car? Yeah, I'm in the car. I'm just so, outside my, my pharmacy. It's going to be hard for you to stand up and get sworn in then, isn't it? So could you please no. raise your right hand? That's all right. No, just right. That's fine. Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. For the record, could you state your name and spell your last name? My last name is R-E-H-M-A-N. And does the pharmacy have any ownership by a physician or a healthcare professional that has prescription writing authorities in Connecticut? No relation. Very good. Is there any point of sale system or computer system that's going to sit outside of the prescription department or the licensed pharmacy area? No, it would not. Very good. Okay, let's get started. Commissioner Carbray, Commissioner Chisholm. Good morning. Good morning. This is a revised drawing. I actually looked at last month. Yeah, you'll have to start. Sorry. Sorry. Um, just, uh, um, Commissioner, just to let you know, this is a, he's had to submit a new application. Right. So, right. Right. So, a new application was filed in the state form. Um, the original application stated zoning approval. Has that been validated? Yes, there were there were a few changes that we made uh, in, in the floor plan, and then the, the commission has recommended me to put in a new application with these uh, few changes that I had. So, this uh, the floor plan stays the same from the last meeting. There's no changes from the last meeting. 
Right, we do have zoning approval in the town. Yes, time. yes, we, we have that now. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I think that was that was the major issue last time. There was no validation of the zoning approval. Uh, this, this current drawing, yes, sir. Yeah, this current drawing is fine. I uh, appreciate you coming back to us with a, a clearer application and a better better drawing of the site. So I have no issue. Yeah, fine. So, okay, Mabu, thank you very much. All set. Uh, thank you, sir. You have a good one. Is Brantford Pharmacy here? Um, I'm, I apologize if I butchered this. Body Grace. Yes, sir. That's me. Sorry, sorry. Back, come back to me. Hold on one second. Where is he? What? Why is your? Why is the name on the screen say Mabu? See, hold on. I think I love it. Oh, it's, it's uh, Maboob's name on the screen. Is Maboob the owner of this pharmacy also? Uh, uh, no. It should be Katie Grace is the man pharmacy manager. Right, but on his on his uh, yes. Zoom, it's got the other gentleman's name on it. I'm just curious. That's okay. All right, let's get, um, can we get his uh, face up again or his picture yep. up again? Bear with me. Yeah, this is a little tricky. Don't go anywhere, Bobby. No, no problem. I'm here. Where is he? Okay. Yeah. Oh, down. Yeah, but see, when I do that, it takes it away. So I have to oh pull it up. The arrow in the middle. Here? No, no. The arrow on the top where it says it's right there. Oh, gotcha. Oh, there we go. All right. Like right now, that's fine. Thank you, buddy. Don't move, buddy. Could okay. you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I hope you got it. I do. For the record, could you state your name and spell your last name, please? F A D Y L. Middle initial, Grace G R A C E, last name. Is there any ownership in the pharmacy by a physician or another healthcare professional that can write prescriptions in the state of Connecticut? Nope. Is there a point of sale system, a computer system, a register that's gonna sit outside of the devised pharmacy, licensed pharmacy area or the prescription department? No. Very good, thank you. Mr. Carver, Commissioner Chisholm. Good morning, buddy. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Morning. So this this also is coming back from the August meeting because of a drawing that was not uh, legitimate. Uh, so I, I just will point out again that these drawings need to be the scale. Um, the revised drawing is better. Um, there are some inaccurate things here. Uh, we've got square footage on a linear line going down the length of the building. What we'd be looking for there is the actual length of the building, not the square footage of that. That's, a, that's um, not correct there. And the building is only 16 feet wide. Is that correct? Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I couldn't catch your question. I can't believe so that. the building, that's 16 feet. That's the total width of the building? Yeah. Uh, no, this is part of the story. Yeah. 16 feet is the total width of the, the pharmacy, the whole thing. The whole, uh, that's all. That's the entire width of the building of the store. That's the, that's yeah, that's the uh, the, the store with okay. all right. So, then based on your claiming the 1395 square foot building, the length of the store has got to be somewhere around 70 feet. You don't have that down, you just you put square footage along the linear length of the building, which is not correct. So, we assume that the building is about 70 feet long. Again, this is not the scale. This drawing oh, is not the scale. Yeah. So. So that's, uh, uh, yeah, you've got square foot designations there, which is not appropriate. It's supposed to be the length of the building. Based on your square footage total, 
which is 1395, the map has got to be about 70 feet in length. It's supposed to be 70 feet uh, on length that the, the whole, this is actually, that is, sorry, yeah. the square footage of the, of the farm seat itself is one, uh, 1396 square footage of the whole farm seat. No, I, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the linear length? How long is the, is the building, the farm is the building? Uh, the whole building itself? Right. The whole building. Right. If the, if the width is 16 feet, we just need to know what the length of the building is. Okay. I'll give you one second. I'll be looking at that. Oh, we, we, we can calculate it. I'm just yeah, saying. Well, we can figure it out. But in general, you know, this plan is better than what you sent in before. Um, and again, it's not the scale, it's difficult to determine. The dimensions, the way you've got it set up. So we, we will go ahead and take a look at this. We're not going to ask you to do it again. But going forward, just for uh, future reference, we're going to demand that all these drawings are scaled as it states in section 59 of the application. So it's pretty, pretty clear and consistent that this needs to be followed in the future. But we'll, we'll look at this plan now because you brought it back for the second time. It is, it is better. Just one quick question, excuse me, Commissioner Carver. Um, has this been approved by zoning in the town? Yes. Has the town of Brantford approved this in zoning? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's been approved? All right, very mm -hmm. good. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, uh, the actual the floor plan is consistent with what you said last time. Again, Referencing that section does require a lot more information, but based on the standard things that we look for, uh, the refrigerators safe, the sink, um, everything else is pretty much open. Yeah. Well, that's right. Standard on that. And so, something that's really important, and, and, and you know, thank you, Mr. Chisholm, for bringing it up. The department doesn't force anyone to have incredibly complicated, expensive architectural designs, but the department has the minimum that's required on the blueprint. And the simple wording of in scale is a very important piece of wording because it allows the agents to come out and in scale, see what was approved and make sure that, that the pharmacy is complying with the plans that were approved. This is not in scale, not even close to being in scale. We could deny it because it's not in scale. I don't think that's what we're gonna do, but I wanna be clear, cause I know you came back a second time that this is a very rudimentary 15 minute drawing. Let's, let's, let's get that straight. Yeah, and, I do apologize as well. To uh, spend a little more time on something as important as this, that an agent is gonna come out and license you um, so that you can take care of the general public. We have to worry about public safety. I think it should take a little more time in designing your space. So um, I wanna be clear, and I know there's not that many people on the call today, and I'll probably repeat myself in the months to come, these types of drawings are probably going to get rejected in the future. Um, though this does contain the minimum information that is required under our statute or blueprint, it does not fall into the category of in scale. All right. So just for the future, I think that's really important because that, 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 we're going to start rejecting these plans. Okay. Commissioner Carver, Commissioner Chisholm, do you have any other comments for Peter? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Genoa Healthcare yeah. LLC is Arthur Tipton in the house. I am here. Where are you? Where are you? I, I can't figure out how to get my video to work today. Oh, you better hurry up. <laughs> I've tried it on three computers and my cell phone. Let 
me try my cell phone again. Yeah, it's not working on my cell phone either. Thank you. We'll continue. We'll, we'll continue, Arthur. Um, keep working on that, please. Uh, I'm sorry. My opening statements. Make sure that your screens work. And we can hear you before the meeting starts, please. Next time, please. All right, Commissioner. I don't. Robert, yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Oh, see, you screwed me up, Art, because I can't see you. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? To help you, God. I do. For the record, could you state your name and spell your last name, please? Arthur Tipton, T-I-P-T-O-N. Is there any ownership by a physician or a healthcare professional that has prescription writing authority in the state of Connecticut? There is not. Is there going to be a POS system, a register, or a computer that's going to sit outside of the licensed pharmacy area? There is not. Very good. Commissioner Carver, Commissioner Chisholm. Good morning, Art. How are you? I'm doing well, Debbie. How are you? Art, uh, walk us through the uh, pharmacy regarding the patient access uh, out of the patient. Into the sure. It, I see the, you know, like I see the consultant room, but where, where's the patient actually access the pharmacy? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I actually asked that question this morning. Uh, in the lower left-hand corner of the of the drawing. Uh, that is an external door that comes into a large waiting area. Um, so that that box behind the med fridge, that's actually uh, a, a small, I guess, foyer, if you will, uh, that leads into a larger, larger waiting room. Uh, and then the clinic uh, that the pharmacy is embedded in is further down that same hallway, uh, if you continue straight. So the, the actually enters into that waiting area to that door at the bottom left? That's correct. And then from there, I, I can see med refrigerators. How do they access pharmacists and staff? Yeah, so that front, that wall right to the left as you come through the door, that's where the POS will be. Uh, that is our pickup drop-off window uh, where patient consultation and, and uh, well, that that's where uh, Transactions will occur. Transactions will occur in the window. I'm sorry? Transactions will occur at that window. I still couldn't hear you. Transactions will occur right at that window. That yes, I'm, yes, I'm sorry. Transactions will occur right at that window. Okay. So if a patient needs to go to consult room, it's over to the right. Um, so if they come to the waiting area, pick up a prescription, need to consult, they would exit out of the waiting area and go over to the consultation section. Correct. And this and that there's a separate door, the Dutch door there, uh, so the pharmacist can, um, you know, access it through the pharmacy. Right. Okay. Yeah, the biggest area was how does the patient get into the into the pharmacy. Other than that, I mean, I think everything else is in place. So we have no concerns. Thank you for the. Uh... Very nice plans. Yeah. Thank you for the in-scale drawing. Yeah, we, we appreciate yeah. it. I, I did them myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank next. you. Thank you. Middletown Pharmacy is Muhammad Ali Ishti. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay, we're gonna get you on the screen so we can see you. Hold on a second. Hang on. There's my little cursor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. You guys believe in skinny pharmacies, 18 feet wide, 16 feet wide, bowling alley. It's a bowling alley. There he is. Okay, I can see you now. Very good. Sir, could you please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you got. I do. For the record, could you state your name and spell your last name, please? My name is Muhammad Atif Ishtiat. Last name is Ishtiat. I S H T I A Q. I apologize for butchering it. 
Thank you. Okay. Is there any ownership in the pharmacy that uh, is a physician or a healthcare professional that has prescription writing authority in Canada? No. Is there a point of sale system or register or another computer system that's going to sit outside of the licensed pharmacy? No. Very good. Thank you. Commissioner Carver, Commissioner Chisholm. Morning, um, thank you for the revised drawing. Uh, much better. Uh, just a couple of questions. I noticed in your revised drawing, you omitted the, uh, the waiting area and the 36 inch gondolas for the financials. Is that just by error? So the last drawing was not up to the scale. So no, this time we try to make it up to the scale. So that's why some some uh, it is more clear now. So if you have any question, I can explain it to you. Yeah, well, that's my question. In, in the original drawing, you show right near the front entrance uh, several yeah, huh? gondolas, and then over to the left, the waiting area. And in the new drawing, mm -hmm. it's not there. Same so time. in the in the in the first one, we put some gondolas in the entrance entrance for the OTC one. Now we are planning to just put the the uh, the medications uh, the OTC medication just on the walls. Okay, so, um, so you've got so you've got nothing in the center there. It's just no, there is nothing no, in the center of the entrance. Yeah, no waiting area, no, no gondolas. Yeah, we can just put the uh, chairs in the in the right uh, right side of the wall. Uh, next to the candy counter, uh, if you scroll up a little bit, uh, where is the candy counter we wrote it? We put the chairs outside there on, on the front towards okay. the entrance. Yeah, I just, just thought that you didn't have any gondolas there to do device drawing. So you're not gonna, just gonna put stuff on the wall. That's fine, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, the actual pharmacy area looks, looks much better, definitely. Um, Everything there is, is appropriate. One observation is the basement. Is anyone else able to get to the basement or is it just for the York pharmacy? This entrance is just for the pharmacy. Nobody can have access from because it's from through the pharmacy, is on the back of the pharmacy. So this basement entrance we only use by ourselves. There is nobody else can access this one from inside of the pharmacy. Go outside from the basement, or is the basement completely closed off? Sorry. When you go outside from the basement, there isn't one uh, outside the basement. The door there is a some uh, there is a, a little hallway, and and the other tenant can if they want to use it, they can go from the out, and they have their own entrance from the for the basement from from uh, from the from the other side. So but from this side, we can. It's a shared basement, but uh, the, if we want to access the basement, we will use this basement door, which is next to the exit door. Sorry. Can... Yeah, there is an alarm system. Yeah, there is an alarm system on the on all the exit gates, like uh, in the back, if you see exit gate and the basement, both has an alarm. And the entrance gate has an alarm, and there is a window a, a window glass break alarm system as well. Any other questions for Mohammed? Uh, no, no, we're good. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you so much. Right, with new pharmacy applications, uh, with in respect to Barnum Avenue Pharmacy, what is your pleasure? I'm looking to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Brantford Pharmacy in Brantford, Connecticut, what is your pleasure? Motion to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Genoa Healthcare LLC in Waterbury, Connecticut. What is your pleasure? A motion to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Middletown Pharmacy in Middletown, Connecticut. What is your pleasure, sir? Motion to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved.
Very good. Uh, let's get to pharmacy remodels, our only live participants. I should approve it just because they're here, but unfortunately, you will have to go out there. Why don't you have a seat in the gauntlet? All right, Commissioner Carver, Commissioner Chisholm, if you'd like to okay. step down. CBS, CBS 2018 Pharmacy Merit in Connecticut. Are you going to do both? Uh, okay, just right. one in America. Very good. Okay. We got the, the drawing in front of us. And basically, it just looks like an addition to console room, pretty standard. I was I was in one two days ago getting my uh, flu shot. Oh, yeah. Patrick, I got that. Right. Uh, and it's, I like the way they've done it. Yeah, it's very convenient. The pharmacy can come right to the pharmacy. Um, yeah, and just just for my privacy. So that's that's really all that's been done here. The addition of a console room. Never seen it becoming a deep cut, obviously, but very, very appropriate. Very good. Thank you. That's it. That's it. That's it. After, after all that stuff, we're going to see. Yeah, it's CBS 185, Pharmacy Seymour, Connecticut. Is there someone representing? Yeah, it's, it's me right here, Raj Dodani. How you doing, Raj? How are you doing? I'm doing well by yourself. Good, thank you. We'll get them up there. Get yep, working on it. Person. I am <laughs> I'm working on it. It's because my mouse is de um, detecting both. <laughs> Come on, where are you? Board. All right, we'll do it up here then, I think. It is. So, all right, is he there? There he is. Okay. How are you? Good morning. Hey, Mr. Carver, this is Mr. Chisholm. Hey, uh, again, this is a addition of a console room. Pharmacy. And sure, you are for pharmacists to monitor the room. This is the same thing that we've done from the CBS 218. So, Thank you, Raj. Thank you. I'll accept the motion for CDS 2018 Pharmacy Remodel. Do I hear a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. I'll accept the motion for CDS number 185 in Seymour, Connecticut. Do I hear a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? I'm going to take a little, before we get to first time managers, I'm going to take a little out. Chairmanship. I'm going to make a motion that all pharmacy, new pharmacy applications and all remodels have to appear live. Since we're live, they have to appear live. The whole time we've been on Zoom, even today, there's been issues. There's been issues with cameras, there's been issues with people. Uh, approving plans while people are in cars where I can't see them or the plants are not in focus or in scale just doesn't cut it anymore. We are meeting live now, and I'd like to get back to seeing plans uh, for new pharmacies and remodels here in the live. So going forward, I'd like to make a motion that all new pharmacy applications, pharmacy remodels have to be live unless the commission can't meet. Zoom is the only option. Uh, that's my motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions, so moved. Very good. First time managers who I was really hoping to see live so I can look you in the eye, but none of you decided to. So, all right, I'm going to call your name um, and please just let me know if you're here. And like I said before, no emojis. I want to see who you are. Daniel Carden, CVS Pharmacy Waterford. I'm, I am here. I don't see you. I will show you. <laughs> I am here. Yes, you are. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Shaman Contractor, CVS Pharmacy Bloomfield. I'm here. Hi, Shaman. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Ashley. How are you? Good, thank you. Ashley Gould, Price Chopper, Torrington. Hi, yes, I'm here. 
Hi, Ashley. Good morning. Thank you. Good Michelle morning. Jones. Good morning. Michelle Jones, Danielson Pharmacy. Danielson, can I? I'm here. Hi, Michelle. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Caitlin Corn Geibel. CBS Hi, Pharmacy. Good, Hi, good morning. morning. Sorry if I put your last. Yusef Makawi, Walmart Pharmacy, North Window. Hello. Hey, hi, good morning, Yusef. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Ryan Vecchetto. Vecchetto. Not next hi. pharmacy. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Good morning. Good, how are you? Anyone here for first time manager whose name I did not call? Good. So we call you here live, well, in this case, Zoom. Um, because here in the state of Canada, we're one of the few states that actually does this. And we do it because the pharmacist manager position is a position of leadership, right? It's a position where the leader in the pharmacy can truly create an environment that works for their staff and also works for public safety and efficiency of the pharmacy. So we like to call you in because we've seen mistakes over the years. So we like to go over some of those things so that they won't be repeated. So that's one of the things we like to do. Um, and I'll just get started by saying that I can't possibly go over all of your requirements as a pharmacist manager, everything that you're responsible for. So uh, University of Connecticut did a fantastic CE uh, about a pharmacy manager's responsibilities. I'm gonna give you the website, uh, the web address, maybe you can take a look at it, it really goes a long way. It's at pharmacy.ucon.edu.ce and you can search the CEs and it's under the constant state of readiness, which is a pretty appropriate title since they titled it before the COVID pandemic, thinking of what we pharmacists have gone through. It is, uh, we're always in a constant state of readiness. So some of the things I like to touch upon that, that are important is that pharmacy, pharmacy managers, the minimum number of hours you have to work every week is 35. During the pandemic, we're seeing pharmacies closing a lot now. Remember, you still have to work 35 hours a week. It's gonna be less than 35 hours a week. You have to ask for a waiver by the department or contact the Department of Consumer Protection, Protection Drug Control to see whether or not that will be approved. The other thing we're seeing is people's licenses expire. You know, one of the tricks I used to use, I actually did it on, I know no one uses a calendar anymore, but I used to put it on a calendar and on the date I put down uh, pharmacists when, when their licenses expire and when uh, licenses for all my technicians expire so that I could see it coming and I would ask, hey, I need a new copy of the license. You don't want an agent to come in and find out that your pharmacist or your technician hasn't been licensed in the last year. Tech ratios. Through the end of the year, we've approved um, continuing on the emergency order of 4.1, but as of January 1st, we go back to what the regulation is, two to one, and three to one if you have a national certified. CEs, we're seeing a lot of people get very confused with the CEs. I'm hoping that our annual licensure that's been approved going back to once a year is going to solve this. But we saw many people not fulfill their CEs recently. And coming to the board and asking for time, the board has been pretty lenient, but I don't know if they're going to be lenient going forward. An excuse of, oh, I just didn't have time, isn't going to cut it. So make sure that the pharmacists are, are all up to date on their CEs. If you have any technicians that are certified or have a specialty, and make sure they're up to date, their specialties or CEs, really important going forward. And also, I, I want to uh, thank Commissioner Chisholm. Uh, NABP has a phenomenal CE monitor and they have a phenomenal bulk. I know many of you are probably licensed in multiple states. They do a great job. I think there's a fee to it, is that correct, Commissioner Chisholm? There's a small fee to it, but it's so, so worth it because they tell you what the requirement in that state is, and it also tell you what you're lacking in order to be compliant in that particular state. It's something they're really looking into. One of the things that we really don't like to talk about is diversion, but unfortunately it's there. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you have to do the best you can to, um, to, to avert diversion. Think of what, what is in the neighborhood? What, what types of drugs are being diverted? We all know the opioids, right? Uh, but there's over-the-counter drugs that are being diverted these days. There's the somas of the world, schedule th threes, fours, and fives to be diverted. Better deal with codeine as a big one that gets diverted. 
United States. So know where the, know what drugs are being diverted, keep track of them, maybe create your own little system. One of the systems we had in our pharmacies was, you know, the person that, that puts the order in cannot be the same person that checks them. There always had to be another person that double checked. We've had instances where it's the wholesaler's word versus the pharmacy word, the pharmacist word of where the, the diverted products went. We're in the bin or weren't they in the bin? Create a system that ensures security that you feel comfortable. It's very, very important. And the other thing that we're seeing that's unfortunate is that when there is a drug loss, when you do find a drug loss of a scheduled drug, you have 72 hours to report it. And the department gives that leeway so that you know, it can be a prescription, a counting error, oh, we found it, there was a partial, you know, whatever it may be. But after 72 hours, you're, you're, if you don't report it within 72 hours, the department can actually write up a file for it. So make sure you understand that if there is a drug loss, that it has to be reported within 72 hours. That's just a few of the things. There's many more, and I hope that CE program will go over some of them. And now I'd like to turn it over to Commissioner Duante to tell you about the Night Watch program. Thank you, Chair Lewis. Well, congratulations to all of you on your appointments as pharmacy managers. That's great. Um, as you can tell from the spirit of this whole conversation, we just want you to be successful. So um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the FDA MedWatch program. It's a site where you can go and sign up for push emails that will come to you about any kind of recalls, patient safety concerns, uh, trends that are reported from the field things that'll help you to be that, that valuable resource for the patients that you serve. So I know it looks like most of you are working for large organizations and I'm sure they have their own methodology of you know, communicating with you on, on different things to watch out for. But again, when you decide to be pharmacist, you committed to lifelong learning. So this is just another tool that makes it pretty easy for you to stay current on what's what's being reported from the field. So I just recommend that you take the time, go in, sign up for some of those push emails. And again, just uh, you know, use that so you can be your very best self when you're serving uh, the residents of Connecticut. And uh, that's, that's really it for me, unless you have any questions. Thank you, Commissioner Iguante. Any other commissioners have anything to say to these young, eager minds? Commissioners, all set? Well, before we go, I just want to leave you with one thing. Because I want you to understand that state policy and company policy are two different things. Your companies, uh, whether it's an independent, a large chain, a grocery store, an independent, they ask you to do something. And if it goes against state policy, your company policy is going to trump it. So understand that. When you have a very difficult decision to make, and you will have difficult decisions to make, use good judgment and do no harm. Usually will come out. So thank you guys. If you're at work, go back to work. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Any questions? All right. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. All right, moving on. Commissioner Guante, request for continuing education program approval. I hope the commissioners had a chance to take a look at it. I actually went through this 74 slides and Kind of interesting. Yeah, I, 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 I said, I'm going to skim them. And when I, the next thing I know, I'm in slide 60. I says, wow, this is pretty cool. So, um, uh, what do you have for us? Yes, I thought it was quite well done, also. Um, for our process, there's a, a document that's a couple of different things, right? So, if the uh, presenter wanted to have this program certified for continuing ed credits, they would have submitted their documentation along with the slides, the bios, the resumes, everything, 60 days in advance. Um, because this was a program, two programs that uh, some of the drug control agents attended, they completed that cover sheet paperwork that you were all provided with. And it's their request just for themselves to uh, have us uh, approve this for continuing education credits. Um, based on everything that was submitted, uh, I would recommend that we do approve this, um, both of these programs um, for the uh, one CEU of live law for each of those. You heard the request before us. Is there a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept. Is there a second? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Very good. Commissioner, you want to continue with your, it's your show, right? Request uh, for a non resident pharmacy approval. Well, thank you. And uh, a lot of the credit goes to my, my partner, Gina, our board administrator. Uh, this one, while the list does not look that exhaustive, uh, this was really um, quite a, a challenging batch to review. Um, I don't know if you have my final report. I see you just have the list. Um, on Gina, did you give everyone the she final did. report? I did, but I didn't put it in this packet. I do have it. Oh, okay. It's okay. yeah. right. um, so um, most of these, um, I am recommending we deny because we need additional information. Um, some of these are already um, OSRX from Missoula, Montana. We've already had a significant amount of back and forth. And um, the, the, the crux of that matter is they are not dispensing. And in those situations, you don't need, there's not a building for license. There's no drug product there, but these pharmacists have to become licensed in Connecticut because they're going to be making interventions on behalf of the residents of Connecticut that they're, they're attempting to serve with Connecticut providers. So we're working through that with them. Uh, we have one that's particularly interesting, um, and uh, that's the Fletcher um, Panacea of Arden, North Carolina. And um, again, as you all know, we don't physically go out and inspect these pharmacies. Um, so we work um, really just based on the information they submit or they uh, omit. And in this case, um, this pharmacy inspection was incomplete. And as Gina dug back through that and uh, had conversations with the uh, North Carolina board, um, there are some uh, glaring concerns with that inspection, which is perhaps why uh, we can get the information. So um, that's just a little color in terms of some of these, um, but uh, you all have my report. And um, unless you have any other questions, I would uh, respectfully request that it be accepted as I see. Any questions for the commissioner? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion to accept the report as presented. I will second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Stay in favor. Commissioner Guanzi, thank you. It's obvious a lot of work goes to Gina. It's obvious how much work it is. Here's, I don't know if this is the record, but this could be the record number of denies. I know. It's I'm close I'm for a short list. Let's, let's put it this way in ratio. It may not be the total number, but the ratio certainly is. Um, well, that's pretty good. Um, I'll take a motion to accept the Pharmacy Commission meetings from last month. If there's been any omissions, errors. Do I hear a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Uh, with, for the record, I was very good. Excellent. Okay. Um, yeah. So, commissioners, we do have a question and answer here. Uh, oh. Um, and this is in regards to the technician ratios. I think they can answer live, or you would be able to. Okay. I, 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 I got a squint. I can't see the screen. Okay. <laughs> About the, I read it oh, I'm sorry. I could have read it. I was. Oh, this is Nathan yeah. Tinker. Yeah, they, they address the department. Send the department. Send send the concerns to the department. Okay. So I will minimize that, and I'll tell him to send concerns to the department. Oh, it's going to come up. No, no, I don't think so. He is live, so he is. I don't understand what you're saying. So I think. 
Can you see the term, Gina? Can everyone else see what that question is? Well, they can because I put it up. Yeah. So yeah. if they can see it, then I think we should let people know how we're going to address. So what we're going to do, right? So we're going to tell him. Oh. So he, he, yeah, just say it out, out loud. Exactly. He can hear it. Uh, you know what? I'll read the question out loud. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Tinker, who is the executive director of the Connecticut Farms Association, has written Good morning regarding technician ratios. The Connecticut Farms Association has some questions and concerns about the reinstatement of two to one slash three to one as a one, one, two, three. What is the best way to discuss these issues, especially since there is no commission meeting in December? Thank you, Nathan Tinker. Um, Nathan, Nathan, if you can hear me, I'm not sure. Thank you for your question. I think um, um, writing the department itself or writing our, our executive director, Rod Barrier, south with your concerns and what those concerns are uh, will probably be the best way to do it. And if the concerns are such that it'll find its way out to the agenda. But, uh, that's one of the reasons why we gave six month lead time that the four to one ratio will be sunsetting um, in, in December 31st uh, for January 1st. That's why we did that. And, and we'll go from there. But thank you for your question. Commissioners, if you have anything to say. Um, did you say that we were going to address it at the November meeting? I thought that's what you said. We were going to confirm it. I think what we uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll look and see where, where where COVID is, whether or not there's another emergency order sunsetted with the emergency order. The whole idea was to go back to our normal legs once the pandemic was over. And the emergency order was over. If there's another emergency order that comes in. I'm sure the department go back to what worked for in the past and, and go to a affordable ratio. But we could address it again in November to see where we are and where we stand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Okay, anything else? I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you. All right.